First of all, Jordan, um, you know, an honor to, to be speaking to you, a pleasure to be speaking to you. Thank you for your time. Uh, uh, I know you're a busy guy, and, and but I mean, this movie that we're gonna talk about, so awesome, it has an age. You know, it's just so perfect, doesn't matter the time. Oh. You know, Frankie goes boom, um, the casting, the story, it's a lot of heart. It's really, you know, it's funny, but it also has a lot of heart. And so, you know, congrats, you know, congratulations on such an awesome movie. You know, um, you. You, you, have, you have done a lot of bunch of good movies, but this one is something that, you know, you know, thank you for the throwback for, for making me you know, travel in time and go believe in those awesome times of those times, uh, you know, when, when the movie originally came out. So, you know, I think the first question has to be, you know, you have a really diverse, um, you know, resume, uh, and that's something that stands out uh, from your from your career. You know, mm. what makes this movie specifically stand out from the rest? Oh, interesting. Um, well, let's see. First off, I don't think I've done anything that is overtly this funny, and mm -hmm. I've always wanted to. You know, I love comedy. I've always loved comedy. But when I first got to Hollywood, I wrote something that was more uh, heartfelt and sad and and Hollywood has a way of kind of asking you to repeat yourself so I ended up writing lots of things that were heartfelt and sad and so people really weren't willing to let me um, I'm not sure if it's public knowledge or you know but I made this movie myself because nobody would let me make this movie in other words I nobody would people like the script but they didn't think of me as a comedy guy when I said I wanted to write a make a comedy they didn't so I was lucky enough to work pretty consistently in Hollywood for a while and so I just kept throwing money in the can and my amazing wife allowed me to use I live in California so half that money is hers and she allowed me to use that money to make a movie and uh, I did it because nobody would let nobody knew that I could be funny or that I would be able to shepherd funny and that's why I did it. Um, so it's that's what among, I think probably the thing that separates it from the rest of the pack. It, and I thank you for mentioning that it has heart because I, 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 it does and I wanted it to and I knew it must, but I, I, I got to be funny. So, um, yeah, again, so many characters with a lot of different situations, so many pieces moving around with the different characters and that casting. Uh, before jumping into the casting, because the casting is something you know, out of this world, taking into consideration the times. I mean, I remember all these people were so busy back in the yeah. day. So yeah. the characters, the being, mm -hmm. just being your personal project, your passion project, we can put it that way. Those mm -hmm. characters, are there, you know, are, are there any inspiration behind personal situations or personal uh, You know, yeah, there's two things. One is uh, I'm a sibling. My brother and I are both crazy addicts. There's addiction in my family. There's all sorts of you know, it goes on for generations back to the cave people, you know, and so we're all nuts. And so there was the craziness between the brothers existed for me and my brother. There's that, um, you know, without getting into too much gory self revelation, the movie wouldn't exist if my first movie hadn't been savaged by the critics. Because this movie is very much about how do you deal with public humiliation? And it took me a long time to figure out that that's what this movie was about. I didn't know. I was just writing a comedy about a guy with an embarrassing sex tape up on the internet. And then I realized, oh, oh, right. I'm writing about Rotten Tomatoes. I'm writing about Rotten Tomatoes. I did not know that until just before we started shooting, my wife asked me like, what the fuck is this thing? What are you doing? What is this about? And I realized, oh, it's about people saying not nice things about me and my movie on Rotten Tomatoes. And what happened to me is I kind of retreated. And this movie was a way in which I said, I'm coming back, fuck y'all. I'm gonna make another movie. And so the movie is about a, a young man who does that in love. And I sort of used the movie to do it as a creative person who just decided that the Raphaels of the world are entitled to their opinion, but they have nothing to fuck to do with me. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to do that when the movie came out, my first movie came out. So. That was the um, personal impetus for it. No, I completely, I completely, you know, understand your your thinking now, and and, and I think you know, I commend you for it because okay, I, I, I agree that you understood it later, but it's it you know it was just a way to just get that frustration out. It was just a way to get that you know a uh, uh, you know a platform, use that platform, just put your frustration out. 
And you know, I think I can, I can recommend you for it. And I, I think it's pretty, it came up really good, really great. So I don't even, you know, I don't have any complaints about it. I mean, <laughs> almost, almost 12 years later, it's still something that you can sit down and just watch. Yeah. And, and, you know, before jumping into the, into, into the casting, why is it? Why is it that, you know, maybe, you know, 12 years later, after, later after the movie came in. You know what, I, I, Raphael, I think that the movie was the only, there's a couple of areas where the movie was a little bit ahead of its time. Being humiliated on the internet is now a daily occurrence for lots of people. They just <laughs> when I, we made they the movie. Care. Yeah, when, when I made the movie, that was not such a, it wasn't such a big deal. It, it wasn't that easy to get humiliated on the internet. Do you know what I mean? Now it's a, it's a real thing. And I think that that's part of it. I also think that um, lucky for me, everybody that's in the movie has only increased their value as, as artists and as celebrities. That's certainly helped me. Um, and it, but the other thing is it still does what it was intended to do, which was give those actors a chance to do something they had never done before. Um, which is when I made this movie myself, I, a friend gave me some advice, said, if you want good actors, there's three things you have to do. A great script, you have to let them sleep in their bed if you're not gonna pay them money, because I didn't pay them money. I paid them $100 a day, it was no money. Sleep in their own bed, give them a great script and let them do something they don't get to do. And we did that, and because they're still not getting to do that, you can watch the movie today and it's still refreshing to see Chris Noth play a drug addict and, you know, an insane person because he's usually got the tie on and he's selling stocks and bonds. And and Charlie is usually still, you know, an angry, violent, you know, bastard. And he gets to be this charming, lovely man in Frankie Go Boom. And so we're still letting these actors, and Ron is obviously not a woman. So we get to see them do something we we haven't seen them do before. So. I think that back in the day, I still today, that's something that stands out, the, the diversity of the characters and their, their performances are, you know, mm -hmm. where, you know what you, you, you put them through. I, I'm you know, pretty sure that was a hell of a fun, you know, a lot of fun it was. while shooting it was. everybody there. Yeah, so, it was. And, the, and the, we didn't have much time. We had to move quickly, but we, we all had fun. And, and again, nobody was there for money. So you didn't have to deal with anybody being a jackass. You know, everyone was there because they wanted to be there. And they all, we all helped each other make this movie. You know, so. everybody wanted to have fun, and that's yeah. something that basically you, everybody will see, sees that through the through the movie. That's yeah. something that the, the movie yeah. does every day pretty, pretty well. Let's talk about the casting again. Yeah. Something you just mentioned, you need the you know the the, the head on the, the head. I think um, everyone just skyrocketed from that time to today. But even back in the days, I think a bunch of those people were already hot. Oh and, yeah, 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 yeah. People like Mr. Beck. I mean, I, when I was sitting there, yeah. I was like, that's Mr. Beck from, from Sex of the City. So it's like, come on. And, and obviously Ron, uh, as a, you know, this, you know, drag queen, uh, uh, yeah. which was something else. And you share Charlie and, and everyone, just the whole casting. Uh, so again, I love, I love to talk about them. So how this all, this all came about, how did you, you know, how, how did the casting process, how did you, you know, make the approach to them and, hey, I'm doing this. It's for fun. It's a passion project. We're gonna have fun. It's gonna be cool. Uh, how did that came about? I I wanted Charlie, and and it, we, Charlie even Charlie was an odd choice because if you look at the script, it, he doesn't seem like he should see be this handsome leading man. He looks like he should be more of a like a funny offbeat character, you know. Um, and 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 yet I wanted Charlie, so I hired the casting director from Sons of Anarchy, and she gave it to Charlie. And that started the process. And once we had Charlie, you know, suddenly we could, we got to, went to Chris and we went to Ron Perlman, who worked with Charlie, obviously, and we went to Lizzie and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then it just started spreading. And then, you know, Whitney, for instance, was a friend of mine and she ended up becoming a very successful actress and nobody knew who Whitney Cummings was when I made the movie. I mean, she was a stand-up comedian, but she was not a television star or, a, mm -hmm. you know, film actress. So everybody seemed to kind of, pop as the thing got released but um charlie coming on board brought everybody else chris everybody so that's how it happens you know it and one of the things if there's any filmmakers listening to this at some point just say you're making the movie 
That's the best advice I can. Just say you're making the movie and pick a date and you're going to make it. And if, once you do that, people start coming up. If you just go, well, I'm waiting for everyone to come along and waiting for all the money. No, I'm making the movie. If I have $5, I'm making it for $5 and I'm shooting on July 1st. Who's in? And people come. But it's, it's so scary for human beings to do that. You know, but it worked. Uh, you, you just jump into one of my, yeah, you jump on one of my questions. I wanted to keep, you know, why you give me a, a difference between independent movies and big films? Because you have worked on so many big films, but you just answered it perfectly. I think that's what it is. You gotta, obviously, uh, you just said, my opinion is my opinion. Just, don't listen to what Rafi Media Villa as a critic has to say. Just, you know, just do your thing. And that's it. You know, just just make it from, from the heart. And that's something that yeah. I saw on this movie. You know, it's just a yeah. lot of heart from you from the, everything. So it just came out so well Beautiful. because of it and has an age because of it, I think it is. Um, you know, what, I mean, so many, so many good characters, so many different actors in awkward situations from, you know, from the, uh, the Charlie scene in, in his brother's room uh, with him not getting hard and the whole situation and, and having Pullman as a drag, a drag queen and, you know, how, how was the, you know, the, maybe the, how was the thing said? How did you manage to peep, make peep everyone serious in such awesome, funny, and just, you know, epic the, situations? Yeah, that wasn't me. Uh, I mean, uh, these are tremendously professional, highly disciplined actors who were able to act seriously and pay attention to their emotional realities while doing things that were so funny that me and the cameraman and the sound were, we're all hiding our faces because we're laughing so hard. And, 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 you know, and they're not, you know, there's a scene where Charlie is slow dancing with the transgender Ron Perlman as Phyllis. And, and I could not watch that. And there's a, I think Ron takes a hit off a joint and is blowing it into Charlie's mouth and bending Charlie over backwards <laughs> in her arms while she's blowing in her mouth. And they were so serious. And I, so it's not me, they're just pros, man. They know how to, they know how to stay in the moment no matter how absurd it is. And, uh, and you know, same with Charlie and Lizzie when they're in that room and Charlie can't, do his function, you know, I mean, they, they were, everybody was just a hundred percent willing and we, and it was a safe set too. We didn't, we all knew that we were dealing with some stuff that could be, you know, embarrassing and touchy. We were, everybody was conscientious and, and they just went for it. And it was my favorite kind of comedy because it was comedy grounded in reality, you know? Yeah, true. That's 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 what that's what I'm saying. The part, the hard part of the story, you see it yeah. on every, on, yeah. on, on, on all the different characters on, on the story. Yeah. Let's, let's just, before I let you go, let's jump into a little bit into Perlman. I, 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 we were speaking, you know, outside yeah. uh, of the record, how I, you know, I met him, I talked to him, I interviewed him back down here in Puerto Rico when where he was recording about four years ago, five years ago already, um, you know, a project they had down here and, and people see this intimate, you know, intimidating guy, big, uh, but he's a teddy bear and he's one of the, one of the nicest persons. And, yeah. you know, what was his reaction? What did he tell you when when he, you told him this is what you, this is what you got to do? You got to do this. Uh, what? How did he react to? He, he he's a professional. We know that. Yeah. But how did he react? He just said yes instantly. He said yes instantly because he knew it's not something he was ever going to get asked to do again, and he approached it with you know real care. I mean, he again, it's a comedy, but he approached her with real care which was important, you know, again, mm -hmm. I, I can't, forgive me if we've already said this, Raphael, but I would not have been able to cast Ron today. I should not cast Ron today. 10 years ago, there were not a lot of trans actors. It was, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the situation that currently mm -hmm. exists, but all that being said, Ron approached it with great integrity and dignity. He picked her dress, he picked her hair, he picked how he looked. And he was, you know, he was very conscientious that this person is not a joke. You know, it, we may be laughing at this person, but not because Ron is making us laugh at this person. It's like, so there was some integrity brought to it. And that was the most important thing about what Ron contributed. He was not just trying to put on a dress and be stupid. He, he actually dignified the character to, you know, to the best of our ability in this rather silly film. He did, he, he did so that. And he's a sweetheart. Yeah, he, he did 
such an amazing job. Everybody does such an amazing job. Um, let, before I let you go, one final question, and, and let's yeah. let's look at it as, as a pitch to somebody that hasn't seen this movie uh, since, when, since when this movie really came out. You know what? Why should they see it? What what is it? Then you know what do you see? You know you pitch it out. Who, why should they okay. see this movie? Uh, once it's it's it, real, the great. If, if 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 there's anyone in the world who is struggling with Let me see. If there's anybody in the world who is struggling with worrying about what other people think about you, watch Frankie Go Boom. Because Frankie Go Boom is about a movie how some guy learns how to not give a shit what you think about him <laughs> and just love the girl he wants to love. And anybody who needs a reminder that we have to be who we are, no matter what people say, no matter what people do, no matter what people think, Frankie Go Boom is a comedy for you. And there's also you know, a pig in a pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, completely agree. I think it's it's something that's still really real. I mean, this, we all are dealing with our, with our situations, with our with our with our pressures, with our you know, with our, we're constantly being compared and who's better than somebody else or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I think again, that's where the heart of the movie to me stands. So. Again, congratulations on a such an amazing, awesome movie. Uh, Thank you, Rafael. And, and and really, you know, I, I I gotta thank you just for letting me enjoy it again because I I just had so much fun rewatching oh, and reliving those times. And and again, thank you. Uh, again, an honor to me to be talking to you. And, and my brother, I look forward to doing it again, Rafael. Let's do it again. Okay? Thank you, Jordan. Peace to you. Thank you. Have a great day. Orale. Adios. Gracias.